we'll convert it to editable poly, add one edge, and lower it here. Then, keeping shift pressed, we extrude this part. For convenience, let's head over to perspective view and hide a part of the wall. We select some of the polygons and hide select it. And the polygons are now gone. I set the inset parameter to build another polygon that will represent the picture. Hi everyone, let's continue to model objects for this scene. And we already have a table and a window, a lamp, and a ceiling. And in this tutorial, we're gonna model these two pictures and a baseboard. And since we'll be modeling smaller objects this time, let's switch to 2D pan zoom mode for easier navigation. In this mode, we'll be able to move our viewport around, zoom it in, zoom it out, while the camera will stay in the same place. So usually what we do is we use this mode to zoom in on minor details and position elements more accurately. Let's create a base board profile and Corona camera. We'll create this box. We have a step here and a step over here. We'll convert it to editable poly, add one edge, and lower it here. Then, keeping shift pressed, we extrude this part. The profile is ready. Now we simply need to align its lines and angles with the reference. Let's zoom in closer. So this is the outer edge of the step. This line is the upper edge. And then I select the points in the back and stretch them out. And it looks like now our baseboard is positioned exactly like in the reference photo. Now we can go to perspective view, select some of the polygons, and also stretch the baseboard all the way to the opposite wall. On top view, make sure the baseboard is straight and as you can probably remember we positioned the wall roughly and that's why after unhiding all we may find out that our wall is misaligned to the left or to the right of the baseboard i select this polygon and on top view move it closer to the baseboard All right, now the gap is gone. The objects fit perfectly as the finish, as the finishing touch, we need to add chamfers to the baseboard. And pay attention that we want to add a chamfer to the bottom edge. So keeping control pressed, I select edges that need chamfers, click chamfer and set the parameters. Set a chamfer amount to about five millimeters. The number of edge segments should be, I would say something about two or three. Okay. And now the chamfers will produce glares, giving a realistic look to the object. 
Next we paint the baseboard white and the wall as well. All right, and so now we need to model the frame. We also need to model the passport too. And finally, the picture itself. And so here will be the texture of the picture. The passport too will have a stone or paper texture. The frame will have a wooden texture. So those will be three individual objects. For convenience, let's head over to perspective view and hide a part of the wall. We select some of the polygons and hide select it. And the polygons are now gone. We didn't delete them, just temporarily hit them. Now we click box, check auto grid, and create a box the size of the picture, more or less. Let's paint it some temporary color. And we go back to viewport and shift the box to where the picture is. So now we convert the object to editable poly, stay in the wireframe mode so that we can see the dimensions of the picture through the edges. And then carefully, we select the Y axis and shift all the points here. All right, done. The picture is now in place. Next, we click the wall and we go we go for polygon selection. And here we click unhide all, hide these walls so that we could clearly see the reference image and perspective view. So now we enable F3 mode, then press Alt X in order to make the picture object semi-transparent. And next let's model the passport too. We set the inset value at around 12 millimeters. And I'm looking at this part here to know when it's enough. All right, and so keeping shift pressed, we use Smart Extrude to extrude the object inwards along the Z axis. Now we need to detach the Passport 2 object and the Picture Surface object individually. In Perspective View, we press Alt Q to isolate the object, and keeping Shift Control pressed, we clone it to a new object and we just call it P. So now let's paint this object gray and position it deeper. I set the inset parameter to build another polygon that will represent the picture. Keeping shift control pressed, we clone it to a new object and we'll name it paint. We paint it yellow, and later it will be assigned a material. Next, we center pivot points to object. We do it for all the objects. Plus, we need to apply a small chamfer to the frame. Select the frame object, click edge selection and make sure all of its edges are selected. Since it's a wooden object, the chamfer should be no less than one and a half millimeters. Something like that. So 
So something like this. Now I apply weighted normals to improve the shading of our chamfer. All right, it looks like the picture is ready. Now let's head over to Corona camera and copy these three objects over here. This will be the other picture and it will have its own materials assigned to it. Okay, so now we have the pictures, the baseboard, the lamp, window, floor, and ceiling all ready. So in the next lesson, we're gonna model a chair, a carpet, some phases, and curtains. All right, see you then.